Episode 1, The Path to the Monastery. I attempted to climb Mount Washington with five friends last winter. Mount Washington is one of the 10 most dangerous mountains to climb in the United States. I think it has the highest death rate of all mountains. Well, we're halfway up the mountain when we came to base camp. I looked at my phone. It was 8.03 p.m. I could feel and see my breath in and out, in and out. I stayed like that for what seemed like hours. And then I closed my eyes again and just focused on the warmth inside my sleeping bag. I remained still, just passing the hours in my frigid surroundings. There was no sensation of time. And when I finally opened my eyes, I thought it was a day later. I looked at my watch. It was 8.25 p.m. Only 22 minutes had passed? That was impossible. A thought came to me, the first of several that would lead me to a monastery. This one was as clear as the mountain air and it was delivered with a voice that was like a whisper in my ear. My relationship with time is out of balance. Episode two, anyone know any monks? When I got home from the Mount Washington trip, I immediately picked up the phone and speed dialed my literary agent, Lisa Leshny. Hi, Jesse, Lisa says after one ring. I want to live on a monastery, I say. Uh, okay, she responds, but don't you mean at a monastery? Either way, I just want to go live with monks. Any particular reason why? Well, I did the physical part. I want to explore the spiritual side. I want better focus, stronger mindset. Aren't there podcasts for that? Perhaps, but I need to immerse myself just like I did with Seal. And that's when the idea hits her. She tells me to hold and then patches me in with the editor for my first book, Living with the Seal, Kate Hartson. When Kate answers, Lisa tells her I'm on the call. I hope you're ready for this one. Jesse wants to go live with a monk, Lisa says, or multiple monks. And I believe you know some that might fit the bill. There's nothing but silence on the line. Episode 3 Getting Sarah Ready And just when I finish packing, Sarah walks in. I'm assuming there are clothes in there somewhere, Sarah half said, half asked. Yes, honey. Did you pack a robe, Mahatma? I actually thought about it, but they'll probably give me one there, right? I was kidding. I'm not. I'm going full Dalai Lama style. Robe, sandals, the whole bit. Sandals? Absolutely, sweetie. Isn't this place in Vermont, Jess? Upstate New York. Jesse. It's the middle of March. They probably have four feet of snow. Snow's a non-issue, sweetie. It's 72 and sunny. Mind over matter. Plus, I'll probably be meditating half of the day anyway. Meditating? <laughs> That's a funny one. Um, how do I say this politely, Jess? You can't sit still for half a minute, let alone half a day. Just last week at your friend's wedding ceremony, you kept tapping Orlando's shoulder, and then you pretended to be asleep when he turned around. You're the least likely guy to go to a monastery. I love you, I said with a kiss, but I got to go. I'll call you when I land. Episode 4. Don't take the vow of silence. And then right before I pulled into the monastery, I got a call from my friend Dori. She's a yoga instructor in the city. She's a good friend, but we hardly ever talk on the phone. I hoped everything was okay. Hello? Thank God I caught you, she blurted. I saw Facebook. You're going to go live at a monastery? Not forever, I said. What's up? Whatever you do, don't take the vow of silence. She was making the word vow sound like a batch of Jim Jones Kool-Aid. Wait, why? My friend, he went on a silent retreat, seven days. When they finally told him he could talk, he couldn't stop. Huh? He hasn't stopped talking since, she said. It got so bad, he was institutionalized. Come on, I'm not kidding. I've been up to visit him. He just sits in a chair talking to a wall. Um, Dori, this isn't the conversation I like to have right before I get to a monastery. I'm sorry, but I'm dead serious, she said. If they ask you to be silent, just say no. Episode 5. I got it all wrong. Maybe I should back up a minute. I'm in a monastery with eight monks, four of which have been here for 50 years. 50 years. We have very little in common. Scratch that. We have nothing in common. 
I haven't even been alive for 50 years. The plan is to stay here for 15 days, and man, time moves as fast as seventh period in grammar school up here. But I should be here long enough to reap the benefits and wisdom of the monks. And man, I got it all wrong when I came up here. I thought they were going to be Buddhist monks, but they're Christian monks. And the monks refer to each other as brothers. And all the brothers have dogs. And not just any dog. They have big German shepherds. There are eight monks, 11 German shepherds, and me on a monastery in the middle of nowhere. Episode 6. Focus on your mantra. Shh. Brother Christopher told me that services start tomorrow at 7.15 a.m. But it's only 7.15 p.m. now. What do I do for the next 12 hours, I asked. He looked me dead in the eye and he said, you think. I shut off my lights and I got comfortable in my old monk chair. I set the timer on my phone for 20 minutes and I closed my eyes. I immediately got bombarded by thoughts as I tried to focus on my mantra. What are my kids doing right now? How's my wife doing? Will Millsap resign with the Hawks? It was a constant stream of everything and anything attacking my mantra, but I kept trying. After what felt like 30 minutes, I figured something must be wrong with my timer. Why hasn't it beeped? I tried again. I closed my eyes and what felt like 10 minutes later, I finally opened my eyes. Three minutes and 47 seconds. Man, I'm fucked. Episode 7, Apple Splat. After the service, I went to the dining room and said hello to Brother Gregory. Shh, I heard from the whole room in unison. It was a silent meal, but nobody told me. There's no sign hanging on the wall that says silent meal with a picture of a monk silhouette using a silent finger to the mouth. Some kind of heads up would have been nice. When I sat down to eat, I held the bottom of my seat and hopped forward to bring my chair closer to the table. The legs of the chair accidentally scratched across the kitchen floor as it moved one inch. It was loud. The monks, Lenny the intern, and the dogs all looked up at me. I don't think they were mad, but it felt like when someone turns their head at the movie theater, which is the international sign for shut the fuck up. I didn't mean to make that much noise. Once I got situated, I looked around the room. It was like watching a television show on mute. The monks were slowly bringing their spoons to their mouths and eating their oatmeal. They perfected the art of eating without the sound of chewing. They did it with such precision and skill that they didn't make a single sound. Not a slurp to be heard. I was starving, so I grabbed an apple. When my teeth penetrated the red skin of the apple, it sounded like a huge explosion, a fireworks display. Juice squirted out and landed right on the cheek of Brother Thomas. And guess what? He didn't even flinch. Total focus. As he brought his spoon of oatmeal to his mouth, the juice splattered right into his goatee. He just sat there and continued to think. But every other monk looked at me. Shh! They all said together in unison. <laughs>